Slide 1. Members of the Advisor Committee, thank you for the opportunity to bring you up to date on the status of the WebRTC Working Group. On behalf of the Chairs, Bernard Abuba, your presenter today, Harold Alvestrand, and Jan Ivar brewer -Rowey. Slide 2. What we're chartered to do. Finishing WebRTC 1.0 is our highest priority. Beyond this, we're developing requirements for WebRTC next version use cases, which require new APIs as well as protocol work. We are also working on supporting specifications such as WebRTC stats, which provides telemetry for WebRTC applications, specifications for audio output and media recording, and the acquisition of media from devices, screens, DOM elements, and the like. Slide 3. What our environment demands. With much of the world sheltering in place, WebRTC has become essential to daily life. The usage of real-time communications has skyrocketed, jumping by an order of magnitude, and so it is critical that WebRTC just work across all browsers and networks. Looking forward, we are seeing demand for low-level access to both encoded and raw audio and video. We've also discussed new data access approaches, such as peer-to-peer -peer data exchange and workers. Finally, with low latency streaming technology used in cloud gaming, as well as large meeting scenarios, it appears that streaming media and real-time communication scenarios are converging, raising the question of whether a unified set of tools can enable both streaming and real-time media scenarios on the web. Slide four, WebRTC 1.0. The WebRTC 1.0 specification has been recycled at CR, and we are now preparing a final CR. The features that are considered at risk, not yet implemented in any browser, have been identified and are being removed or moved to other specifications. We measure progress towards proposed recommendation in two ways. Via the web platform tests, which measure API conformance, and via the confluence map which measures implementation completeness. The WPT tests show many issues, but also lots of interoperability. One of our current projects is to assess the test coverage of advanced features, such as simulcast. These features are difficult to test in WPT because they involve at least three parties, two browsers and a conferencing server. Recently, we have added a simulcast loopback test in WPT and are looking to evolve it to improve coverage. Another way we measure progress is via the Confluence map, which tracks implementation completeness. This shows steady progress in the last year. All features not marked as at risk have been implemented in at least one browser. Prior to the pandemic, we expected that many of the features implemented in only one browser would be ported to other browsers by fall of this year. The pandemic has slowed progress somewhat. Measurements indicate that much of the usage of the WebRTC API comes from trackers, applications which don't call both set local description and set remote description. So security and privacy concerns have risen in importance. Privacy concerns relate to address snooping and port scanning is a security issue. Address snooping has been addressed by limiting access to candidate addresses in the absence of permissions. Addressing port scanning will require implementation changes and some additions to the security and privacy section of the specification. Slide five, media capture and streams. Media capture and streams has been recycled at CR. The WPT test results show many features working in 75% of browsers and the overall sense is that this API works. There are also privacy concerns relating to fingerprinting because the application picker model enables an application with permission to access information on all devices so that it can present its own interface to the user. In contrast, the screen capture specification utilizes a browser picker model where the application once granted permission only gets information relating to devices selected by the user. The working group is currently discussing how to transition from the application picker model 
to the browser picker model without breaking applications. Jan Ivar Broroi of Firefox is leading the effort on this. Slide 6 WebRTC NV use cases. The next version use cases fall into two categories new use cases and improvements to existing use cases identified in RFC 7478, the original WebRTC use cases document. Within improvements to existing use cases, we have enhancements to multi-party online games with voice, enhancements to large video conferences, and enhancements for applications running on mobile devices. Two specifications have been developed to address these use cases. WebRTC SVC, which extends WebRTC to support scalable video coding, and WebRTC ICE, which provides low-level control of Natraversal. For new use cases, we have peer-to-peer -peer file sharing, which uses the WebRTC data channel, and Internet of Things use case for devices such as smart speakers or doorbell cameras, and use cases requiring access to raw video, such as funny hats and machine learning models. There is also a virtual reality gaming use case where metadata is sent along with the media and a secure video conferencing use case. These last two use cases require access to encoded media. Slide 7, Web Transport and Web Codecs. Today, streaming and real-time media use different APIs for discovery and control of codecs, as well as different transport protocols. The web transport and web codec specifications are being incubated in WICG to answer the question whether a single set of APIs and protocols can be provided to address both scenarios. Web transport aims to provide transports for both streaming and real-time scenarios. This is achieved by leveraging quick reliable streams used for file transfers and conventional streaming as well as unreliable datagram transport used for real-time communications and low latency streaming. Design of the web transport protocols is handled in the IETF Web Trans Working Group and the charter for a corresponding W3C Web Transport Working Group is under development. Web Codex in the early stages of incubation is an attempt to provide unified support for codec capability discovery as well as low-level access to encoded and raw media for both streaming and real-time communication scenarios. Functionality not covered in either web codecs or web transport, such as packetization, would be handled in WebAssembly. Slide 8. This presentation has provided a bird's eye view of the WebRTC Working Group. The bird that most reminds me of the WebRTC Working Group is the roseate spoonbill, a rose-colored bird that, at a distance, might be mistaken for a flamingo. The roseate spoonbill is said to be gorgeous at a distance, but bizarre up close. Like the spoonbill, WebRTC APIs may appear simple at a high level, but are quite complex for application developers. With its distinctive bill that resembles a long spoon, the spoonbill can be said to be a bit nosy, reflecting some of WebRTC's privacy concerns. Our hope is that the next generation of media technologies is less complex as well as being less nosy. Slide 9. Thank you for your time. I would also like to thank the W3C staff, Dom, and the participants, editors, and chairs of the WebRTC Working Group.